Speaking of great organizations, we got two of them that absolutely hate each other in Ohio State and Michigan. And we had an absolute bombshell drop yesterday when Tony Alford, the running backs coach at Ohio State as of 24 hours ago, took the job to be the running back coach at Michigan. So this is crazy for a number of reasons. I think this one-off clip is going to do pretty well. So if you're watching right now, Michigan fans, Ohio State fans, regardless of what you root for or who you root for, make sure you're locked in right here. College football every single day, live three times a week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 11 a.m. Eastern. Want y'all here. Thank you so much for that. All right, let's keep it rolling here. Tony Alford leaves Ohio State for the running back's job at Michigan. He was the running back's coach at Ohio State, really successful at Ohio State, was there for nine years, coached guys like Mike Weber, J.K. Dobbins, Ezekiel Elliott. Like th This is not a small loss for Ohio State, which we'll talk about more here in just a moment. The timing is brutal. <laughs> like this is They're in the middle of spring practice as Ohio State. So as a player, you're now going to have somebody new for the duration of spring practice to run you through individual drills, to try and coach up the offense. Like I'm curious to see what Ohio State does here long term. But in the short term, this is just brutal because you're stretching your coaching staff even more thin than it was. The timing could not be more or less ideal. But the part that makes it more brutal is obvious. It's leaving for that other logo. If Tony Alford left to be the head coach at a G5 school, I think most people would say, hey, this isn't ideal for us because, again, it's spring practice. But go do what's best for you. Go, go be a head coach somewhere. Awesome. Or if it was a running back's job somewhere else, hey, still don't love that. I don't love that you went and took the running back's job at insert whatever power conference school you want to there but we get it, we understand, do what's best for you. The do what's best for you and we get it sentiment, I think left when you saw that Michigan logo. He's literally leaving for the school that they preach that they hate 365 days a year. They cannot stand Michigan. And that's pretty obvious to say right now, but I think it needs to be mentioned when it comes to how the players likely feel internally about Tony Alford leaving, there could not be another school that they would hate for him to leave more for. I said at the top of this live show, I tweeted it out yesterday, Saquon Barkley leaving the Giants for the Eagles. Tiki Barber is saying, hey, you're dead to me, Saquon. You got folks in New York that I'm sure probably burned number 26 jerseys the other day. This move, Tony Alford from Ohio State to Michigan, makes that look like a world peace ad. All right, this is, this is only going to pour fuel on that fire when they meet here that, uh, that last week of the season in November. Why is this happening? Pretty fair question. I'm going to go ahead and give you my best estimate of, of what I can tell the situation is. Tony Alford had had a lot of different jobs offered to him from other schools throughout the time at Ohio State. Over a nine-year nine stint in Columbus, a lot of places came knocking. And every single time, Ohio State said, all right, we see that. We're going to do what we have to do to keep you. They give him a, a better situation, it sounds like, and they were able to keep Tony Alford on staff. But that can only happen so many times before eventually another school is going to be able to poach him. Like LSU came knocking, to my understanding, throughout the time in, in Columbus. Notre Dame came knocking at different points when Tony Alford was in Columbus. But after a while, like you can only defend a coach for so long. And it sounds like this is a better situation from what I'm understanding for Tony Alford financially. Good for Tony Alford. Good for Tony Alford. Go do what's best for you. Again, the timing is brutal. The place that you're landing is brutal if you're an Ohio State fan or you're an Ohio State player. But at the end of the day, good for Tony Alford. Go do what's best for you. Now for Ohio State, I expect them to swing big for whoever that next running back coach is going to be. Like, I think nobody is safe when it comes to who that running back coach could be. If you're a big-time college football program today, you check in with your running back coach. Names off the top of my head that I don't know have any validity to. There's a full list of names on Letterman Row, Ohio State's, uh, or on three's Ohio State site, so go check that out. Spencer Holbrook, Tim May, Andy Backstrom, crushing the coverage. Get a membership there. They will keep you in the know up to the exact minute when it comes to this running back coach search. Some names, though, that I would consider. DeMarco Murray, running back coach at Oklahoma. He went to Oklahoma. He will not leave Oklahoma, in my opinion, for a small price point. Got to at least give him a call. To Shard Choice. Ace recruiter out there in Austin at the University of Texas, their running back coach, played at Georgia Tech. Give him a call. Throw a bag at him. Do whatever you have to do to get him to come to Ohio State. Eddie George, it's already been reported he's not interested. He's a head coach at Tennessee State. Good for Eddie George. But again, he's an alum. At least give him a call. 
shoot him a couple texts. Hey, Eddie, you up? Shoot him a FaceTime and see if you can get him to take that running back's coach job and get him back home to Columbus. You at least got to call him. You at least got to call him a few times to make sure he doesn't want that job. But when it comes to what this mold will be for Ohio State, be a couple of things. I think it'll be a young guy. I think it'll be someone who can connect with recruits, who can be that asset for them on the recruiting trail. That's, I think, the mold it'll be in and someone that I think could have some longevity, maybe a rising star kind of prototype for the Buckeyes. So they're going to swing big here. It hurts to lose your running back coach. It hurts the timing they lost their running back coach in. But there is a an opportunity now to swing a pretty big bat with that logo. And uh, yeah, Ohio State, man, they're, they're not going quietly into that good night. When it comes to what it's going to do for their running back room, man, like they're still in good shape, right? Like Quinshawn Judkins, thousand yard back in the SEC, they're going to be okay. Travian Henderson has proven he's a thousand yard back as well. Chip Kelly's running the offense. It hurts on the macro level to lose Tony Alford for Ohio State, but at the end of the day, like 2024, I think will look very much so how it would have if he had stayed the running back coach. So that's the Ohio State side of things. For Michigan, like I think it's pretty cut and dry. This is a win. There's no way around it. This is a win. You hired a running back coach that has a solid track record as a coach and as a recruiter, and you took him from the team that you hate. Like you probably would have hired Tony Alford regardless of what school he was at. But you can't tell me it didn't sweeten the deal a little bit that it was at your rival school, Shrone Moore. Now, as far as I can tell, 2-0 and against Ohio State. Good for him. There's no other way to slice it. This is a win for Michigan. They're going to have their fun on social media. They should have their fun on social media. They should enjoy their dunk session. Like, good for Michigan. This is a big-time hire by them. Sharon Moore adds another piece to his staff that will help in the acquiring talent sector of things for, for the Wolverines. Because that's sort of an interesting part to look at here. When Sharon Moore got the head coaching job in Ann Arbor, the label he had was, hey, he's going to really prioritize recruiting. He's going to make it more of a point for him to go and add top talent to Ann Arbor. Well, he's got somebody else on his staff now to further push that mission of making Michigan a team that, that you know kind of recruits in that top 10 range, I believe at least, will be their efforts. Because Michigan previously, really big developmental school, They'll touch the top 10 a few times. Usually they're in that top 15. I don't expect any exodus from Ohio State's running back room, but I do think that Michigan overall is going to bolster their recruiting efforts. And then obviously when it comes to this game, that last weekend of November, or the last weekend of the season in November, there's going to be a lot of juice. going to be a lot of juice because I promise you the folks in that locker room in Columbus, they feel some type of way about their coach leaving for the rival school and when he left I'm just saying, there's going to be no shortage of energy. As if that rivalry needed anything else to add to it. It's got all the juice and then some when it comes to that weekend. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.